What's going on, everybody? Mr. Octagonal here, Andy. Of course, yesterday, we got ourselves some big baseball news. Mookie Betts has been traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers in a three-team deal also involving the Minnesota Twins. So I will uh, give my grades for all three teams here, give my thoughts on the trade. I'm not going to be really talking about the Jock Peterson deal that happened directly after him and Ross Stripling were traded to the Angels for some infielder who... I have never heard of, uh, so I'm not really going to talk about that one, but I think that probably is a pretty good trade for the Angels. Their lineup versus righties will be scaring, and versus lefties, I assume it's unchanged. So first off, we're going to look at this trade as of the perspective of the Minnesota Twins, who are the other team in this deal, and they traded starting pitcher prospect Brutazar Greaterall. I know I butchered that name. He is the number 84 prospect in the majors. I know it's in that ballpark. They traded him to the Red Sox and received Kenta Maeda from the Dodgers. Maeda isn't the youngest. He's 31 years old, and he's solid. He's not great, but the, what the Twins need to put them over the edge is pitching. Their lineup was great last year. They did lose a few pieces like C.J. Crone, but for the most part, their lineup is back. They also signed Josh Donaldson the offseason, which... I don't know if that was a great signing, but I think for the immediate future, it was a good one. I'm just worried about the back end of that contract when he's kind of out of his prime and the Twins have to pay him a lot of money. But for this year, that'll be a more than fine contract for them. So their lineup is debatably a little bit better than last year, which says something. And now they're getting a guy in Maeda who's always been a pretty respectable pitcher for the Dodgers. Last year, he went 10-8. 4.04 ERA, 169 strikeouts, nice, and a whip at 1.07. So the ERA might be a little bit misleading. If a whip is that low, then that ERA might just be a circumstance of not having luck. Maeda is pretty versatile in a rotation. He has been a starter for the Dodgers. He can give you five, six, seven innings. You can also use him out of a bullpen. So there are a number of different ways the Twins can use Maeda. And I think this is a good pickup for them, but at the same time, He's probably only going to be good for another two or so years. And they're trading a prospect in greater all who has a chance of becoming a future all-star. And I'm never in love with the idea of trading your future for an, an, a decent player for a year or two. However, I do think Maeda is a good pickup and it could move the Twins over the edge in what I think will be a very competitive AL Central. I think the White Sox will be good this year. I think the Indians will be pretty good. So I do think the Twins need to boost themselves up a little bit. So I'm going to give them a B-. minus. On paper, I think it's kind of a bad deal for them, but I think this could move them over a hump to put them in that uh, top tier in the AL category. With all the Astros drama, I think the Yankees and maybe the A's are the only surefire teams in the AL. So I'm going to give the Twins a B-. minus. Next up, we got the Boston Red Sox. If I was a Red Sox fan, I would be miserable because the way they have managed their money these past few years has been absurdly terrible. And they kind of didn't have a choice to trade bets, but if they've done a better job these past few years at building their team, this probably wouldn't be as big of an issue. It seems like Boston's front office is really focused on winning that one championship and not worrying about the contracts. I mean, if you look at their payroll, J.D. Martinez is making 23 mil a year. He's a good hitter. But he doesn't play defense. He's a DH, and it's not like Mike Trout or Cody Bellinger have played. They're paying Chris Sale 20 mil a year. That's justified. They're giving Xander Bogarts 20 mil a year. That's justified. But Nathan Eovaldi, 17 mil. He had one good playoff run with the team, and they're paying him 17 mil a year. Dustin Pedroia is getting paid 13 mil a year, and he might not play another inning for this team. Feels like he should have retired years ago. And then Jackie Bradley's getting 11 mil. He's a good defender, but he's a below average batter. So all around, the Red Sox just have wasted their money. They're not like the Dodgers and the Yankees. They can't throw around cash. And David Price, even though he was traded in this deal, I mean, they gave him a gigantic contract too. So they've just not managed their money well, and that's why their team isn't where they want to be. They traded Mookie Betts and David Price to the Dodgers. They received Greater Rawl from the Twins, who's probably going to be in the majors in a year or two. I think he has the chance to be a future All-Star. And then they got Alex Verdugo from the Dodgers. And I think this is an I think it's a good pickup. Even though the Red Sox kind of look like they're going to have to rebuild, they don't have a lot of pieces for the future. Maybe Xander Bogarts, but he's 27. He's not getting any younger. And when this team's really good again, he might be about 30. 
And then I think the only ever surefire pieces are guys like Andrew Benintendi, Rafael Devers, Michael Chavez. That's a solid core, but I don't think that's winning you a World Series. It's now adding another piece in Verdugo, who's not only a good player right now, but he's only 23 years old, and he has a chance to become something pretty special. So I do think that's a pretty good pickup for them. But the problem is I think they could have gotten more. I actually recorded this video last night. I decided not to upload it because there were too many moving parts in the deal, and I wanted to be specific. But I was projecting them to get greater all. Verdugo, and then two other top 50 prospects from the Dodgers, starting pitcher J Dustin May and shortstop Jeter Downs. And I kind of wanted uh, the Red Sox to have a shortstop named Jeter because I found that kind of funny. But I mean, still, for the number two player in baseball, I know they traded a bad contract in there too in David Price. But they got one top 100 prospect and one guy in Verdugo who can be part of their future. I think they should have gotten way more. I got Mookie Betts as a free agent. I get he probably would have left. But I think there's some team out there that had to be willing to pay more. And for a top five player in the game, I just don't think they got enough. And while they kind of had to trade him, I think they could have gotten more. And the way they've managed their money in the past few years is why I'm going to give them a such a low grade. I'm going to give them a C-. minus. I know they had to trade Mookie, and they did that. But had they built their team better, they probably could have convinced him to stick around. And they definitely should have asked for more trade pieces because the Dodgers always have talent. I'm sure you could uh, try to negotiate and get the Dodgers to throw in one of those top 50 prospects. Probably not Gavin Lux, but maybe May or Downs. So I, I just don't get the negotiating strategy at all from the Red Sox. Meanwhile, for the Dodgers, I'm going to give it an A+. I think this is a great deal for them. They traded Kenta Maeda and Alex Verdugo for David Price and Mookie Betts. David Price is about as good as Kenta Maeda. Obviously, prime David Price was better, but Price isn't really in his prime anymore. And even though he's on a bad contract, it's not an issue because this is the Dodgers. They have plenty of money. Then the, the Yankees have like unlimited cash, it feels like. So I don't think the Dodgers will have to worry about this contract. And they basically swapped Alex Verdugo for Mookie Betts, which is a gigantic upgrade. Verdugo's a nice player who has a bright future, but for this season alone, for trying to win a World Series right now, Mookie Betts is a top five player in baseball. And this lineup is now absolutely deadly. I mean, they got Mookie Betts, Cody Bellinger, Corey Seager, Max Muncy. Uh, the list really does just go on. And even though they're losing some talent in Peterson, Verdugo, and Maeda, they're getting a superstar in Mookie Betts and a quality back-end uh, pitcher in David Price. So I'm going to give the Dodgers an A+. I think the only way this doesn't work out is if they don't win the World Series this year and Betts leaves, which is a possibility. But if the Dodgers can get him to like it here enough and if they can convince him that this is a winning program and, heck, if they can get a World Series, I think that should be more than enough to convince Mookie Betts to stay. And I think the Dodgers right now have a clear favorite for the World Series. I don't think there's met that many teams who are really good enough to compete. I mean, I think you got the Yankees. I think you got the Braves. Maybe the Twins. Maybe the Cardinals. Maybe the Astros. But that's about it. I think the Dodgers right now are the clear favorites to win the World Series. Or at least to get out of the National League. So, I think they should be able to finally get over that hump and really figure things out. And going back to the whole uh, Mookie Betts free agency thing, even if they sign him to a gigantic contract and he sort of flames out, it's not that big of a deal because the Dodgers, as I said, they have plenty of money. And if this was some normal team who would be re doing this trade for Mookie Betts and re-signing him in the offseason, it would be a bigger risk because he'd eat a bunch of their contracts and salary. But now that he's on a team in the Dodgers who has plenty of money, it's not really a risk for them. So that's why I'm going to give them an A+. I think this is a great, great deal for the Dodgers. Tell me what you think in the comments below. You think this is a win for the Dodgers, win for the Sox, or the Twins? If you're a fan of one of these teams, let me know how you're feeling in the comments. Sorry, Red Sox fans. I like the Tigers, so we can cry together.